Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this lecture. This is uh, lecture number two, and we are dealing with the structure of atom. In the previous class, we had dealt with uh, some questions, I think, from the previous year papers, and we had seen how we can use what we have learned in the questions. Uh, we'll continue on that. And... Uh, Move on to the next uh, question. And the next question is uh, this one. And I hope you can give me the answer quickly. The ratio of wavelengths for Transition from 2 is to 1, from 2 to 1 for L, lithium plus plus, helium plus, and hydrogen is. Option B is the option that you got that I'm afraid to tell you is the wrong option. So I'll give you more time to do it. Now you have changed your answer and the answer you have given is option C. How do I get the wavelength for transition from 2 is to 1? If you remember the formula, 1 by lambda is equal to R, the Lidwa constant into Z square, 1 by N1 square minus 1 by N2 square. Remember, on this side, you have 1 by lambda and nothing else. Now, the transition is same from 2 is to 1. So, this will be same. R is same. 1 by lambda is proportional to Z square. 1 by lambda is proportional to Z square. 1 by lambda is proportional to Z square. So, lambda will be proportional to 1 by z square. So, lambda of lithium is to lambda of helium. I am not writing plus plus. Is to lambda of hydrogen will be in the ratio 1 by 9 is to 1 by 4 is to 1 by 1 which is definitely not equal to this one. I can't tell you how to find it out. If you cannot find it out, well, you will have to work on your skills. I can't help you with that. But that is the answer. 4 is to 9 is to 36 is the ratio. And remember, these are simple things that uh, you must be able to do. On your own, having said that, I take you to the next question. And the next question is this. Energy E of an hydrogen atom with principal quantum number N is given by minus 13.6 divided by N square. This formula may not be given. The energy of a photon ejected when an electron jumps from N equal to 3 to N equal to 2 is approximately how much? Option A, 1.9. So you have to find out the change in energy. So that will be energy in the final stage minus energy in the initial state E3 minus, sorry, change in energy. The energy of a photon. So the energy of the photon will be E3 minus E2. Now, if you do this, you will have minus 13.6. If I just write it in that fashion, it will be 1 by 2 square minus 1 by 3 square. Yes or no? The higher energy level, 
minus low energy level. Do we understand this? Both are negative. So you will get 13.6 into, I think, uh, how much? 5 by 36. Yes or no? Yes, sir. And that would be your answer. And the answer would be 1.9 electron volt. Remember, energy in the farther orbits is higher. Energy in the lower orbits is less. If you talk about in terms of negative, the most negative energy will be in the ground shell. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Don't get confused. This is the next uh, question. The energy of an hydrogen atom in the nth orbit is En. Then the energy in the nth orbit of a singly ionized helium atom would be how much? Option A, you all know that energy is directly proportional to Z square by N square, N is same. And that is why you have your answers. Let me now give you this question. Remember, any one of this question most likely is going to appear in the exam, in the session that you are going to give. The wavelength of a radiation emitted is lambda naught when an electron jumps from the third to the second orbit of hydrogen atom. For an electron jump from the fourth to the second orbit, what is the radiation, wavelength of the radiation emitted? Option B. Remember, 1 by lambda is R into Z square into 1 by N1 square minus 1 by N2 square. Z here is 1. In the first case, 1 by uh, lambda naught will be equal to R into the lower shell is 2. So, 1 by 4 minus 1 by 9. Yes or no? Yes. I think that will come as 5 by 36 R. In the second case, if I call the wavelength as lambda, 1 by lambda will be equal to R into the first is 1 by 2 square, but the second one is 1 by 4 square. So now I will get, I think, 3R by 16. Yes or no? Yes. Yes or no? Yes, sir. So, lambda divided by lambda naught will be how much? When you calculate it, I think it is going to come as 20 by 27 lambda naught. It is coming? Yes, sir. So, that is the answer. You must be careful while you are multiplying or dividing. If you take the wrong ratio, well, you will end up with the wrong answer. And with the wrong answer, you don't get plus 4. But according to my calculations, you get uh, minus 9. Anyways, this is the next question. If the scattering particles are 56. Now, this is just one question which goes to the earlier model. If the scattering particles are 56 for 90 degrees, then what will be the number of particles at 60 degree angle? Just to remind you, the number of scattered particles was proportional to cosec raised to the power 4 theta by 2 or inversely proportional to sine raised to the power 4 of theta by 2. That is the only thing that you have to do in this particular question. So, the number of scattered particle, number of scattered particle for angle 60 degree divided by number of scattered particles for angle 90 degrees 
will be sine of 45 divided by sine of 30 raised to the power of 4. I think you should be able to calculate. This one, what is the answer you are getting? No one is getting any answer? Oh, option F. Option A, 224. That is absolutely correct. That takes me, that takes us to the next question. Remember, the more the number of questions you are going to do, the questions are pretty damn simple. And one of these questions is going to appear in your exam. This is the next one. An electron is making a jump from fourth to the fifth orbit. What is the change in the angular momentum? So, we have to find out the change in the uh, angular momentum. It is making a jump from the fourth to the second. Uh, so, uh, from fourth to fifth. So, the final momentum is angular momentum in five minus angular momentum in four. Yes or no? Angular momentum is NH by two pi. Remember that? So it will be equal to h by 2 pi into n2 minus n1. Yes or no? Yes. You just need to put the values. h, forget about the power because power is going to come same. 6.6 .6 divided by 2 into 3.14 multiplied by 5 minus 4. That's it. You can see in the numerator, is 6.6 .6 in the denominator, somewhere around 6.6. .6. So the closest answer that you have is option C. Remember, you have to do the calculation approximately. No one is asking you to give the exact answer. The options will be far away from each other. You can just do a bit of approximation. Having said that, this is the next question. In a hydrogen atom, the difference in energy of the electron in N2 and N3 shells is E. What is the ionization energy? The option B. So the answer is? Option B, 7.2 E. So the difference in energy is between N2, delta E, will be some constant K into 1 by 2 square is 4 minus 1 by 9. Yes or no? Yes. Now it becomes 5k by 36 and this 5k by 36 is given as E. Yes or no? Yes, sir. How do I get the ionization energy? The ionization energy, if I call this as E0, the ionization energy will be the energy that is required to take it from the ground shell to infinity. Yes or no? Yes. So the same thing will come. The first shell will be the ground shell and then it will be infinity. Yes or no? Yes. So this E0 is nothing but equal to K. Just remember that. So from here, you can get the value of E0 as 36 by 5 times E. And no prizes for guessing. This will be equal to 7.2. I hope we are following this. Yes or no? Yes, sir. The questions in this category are pretty simple and pretty straightforward. The more the questions you do, the better is your probability of doing it in the examination. All this is the next one in a Bohr model of hydrogen atoms. The ratio of periods, that means time period of revolution of an electron in n is equal to 2 and n is equal to 1. So how are you going to solve this question? I'll give you five minutes to go about it.
well you have to here uh, what is going to happen is you have to shift the electron is not going to fall from the third bore orbit to the first but you have to shift it from first to the third do we understand this yes for that we need uh, energy how much energy is needed to shift it so that will be equal to 13.6 into 1 by 1 minus 1 by 9 do we understand this yes so how much energy is needed 13.6 into 8 by 9 you don't need to multiply you need don't need to divide you just need to keep it like this this much energy should come yes or no yes sir. now this much energy must come from some radiation whose wavelength you have to find now whenever we have a radiation we have a wave the energy of the wave and i have told you the energy of the wave is given by the formula h into f yes or no yes sir. or it can be written as h into c by lambda yes or no yes so i can write it as 12000 40 nanometer or 12,400 by lambda. This lambda has to be an Armstrong unit. The answer will come in electron volts. So remember this. So this is the formula that uh, you must remember. We are going to use a lot of this formula in this chapter as well as in the next chapter that we are going to start probably from tomorrow. So this energy will be equal to energy coming from a photon. So 12,400 electron volts divided by Armstrong unit, ka lambda. So my lambda becomes just multiply and divide. Your lambda become 12,400 into 9 divided by 13.6 into 8. Now, remember, you have to get to the quickest answer. Now, just looking at this calculation, which is the answer that is going to come? The answer that is going to come will be option D, 113.74 Armstrong unit. Is it coming or not? Yes. To just get a quick calculation, you can just take, see, you have to calculate. I can't tell you how to calculate. You can just see 12 multiplied by 9 and you multiply 13 by 8. 12 multiplied by 9 is how much? 108. And uh, 13 multiplied by 8 is how much? So it will come almost equal. Yes or no? Zero 04. It will come almost equal. Yes or no? Yes, sir. It is coming almost equal, so the answer should be almost equal. So forget about the units. It, it should be 1 point something or 1.0 something, something like that. Yes or no? That is the answer that you are going to get. Do you get this? You have to do approximate calculations, and your calculation should be fast enough. This is the next one that is going to come. The absorption transition energy between two energy states of 
hydrogen atom are three. The emission transition between these states would be three, sir. How did you get three? How did you get three? Sir, uh... We can get uh, how many absorption spectrums are there? We can get those many emission spectrums. The question should have been put in a different way. Now, uh, the number of lines which are absorbed, did I tell you that formula of uh, number of spectral lines that are absorbed? I think I have uh, not given you. So uh, I will come to that when we are going to do this. Now, uh, forget about this. Uh, let me put this question in a different way and then ask you and then we will uh, solve it once we done that uh, spectrum. Uh, the reason I gave you this question was a, a bit different from uh, this one. So I'll just change the question. Just change the question. I will just change the question and I'll put the question like this. I'll put the question like this. An electron is in n is equal to four state. Find the number of spectral lines. It can emit if it moves to n is equal to 1. Let me put the question in this way. I hope the question is clear. Yes. I'll give you two minutes to solve this. How did you get six? So by using the formula n2 minus n1 plus 1 into n2 minus 1 by 2. You can use the number of spectral lines that are emitted is n2 minus n1 <coughs> plus 1 into n2 minus n1 divided by 2. Here n2 is 4 and n1 is 1. Do we understand this? Yes. Okay. Now, you can note down this as a formula only. If it is making a transition from a nth orbit to ground state from nth orbit to ground state then the formula would look like this n into n minus 1 by 2 yes or no yes, sir. normally whenever you are going to get question on this uh, pattern 
the question will be from one higher state to the ground state. Do we understand this? Yes. Now, since we talked about uh, the absorption spectrum, now remember, beta. Now, uh, when the electron is jumping, when the electron is jumping from lower to higher level, it cannot it cannot jump on its own. Do we understand this? Yes. An electron is jumping from lower to higher, from lower orbit to higher orbit. It cannot jump on its own. Do we understand this? Yes. It can only jump when someone gives it energy. Yes or no? Yes. Now, look at this diagram and I'll try to explain it. Oops. These are, let us say, four energy levels. This is energy level number one, this is two, this is three, and this is four. Now, let us see what happens when it can jump from four. Remember, the energy level of four is more than energy level of three, more than energy level of two, and more than energy level of one. Yes or no? Yes. Now, when it jumps from 4, it can jump from 4 to 3. It can jump from 4 to 2. And it can directly jump from 4 to 1. Do we understand this? Yes. So it will have three lines in that case. Do we understand this? But it can also jump from 3 to 2 once it has reached the third level. It can also jump from 3 to one when it has reached level three. So now you have two more extra lines. Once it is on level two, it can jump from two to one. Therefore, the number of spectral lines it can emit becomes six. That is N2 minus N1 plus one. That is NC2. Do we understand NC2? Yes. Something of that nature. But when it is jumping from lower to higher level, one, two, three, four. Once it is jumping from lower to higher level, either it can jump from one to two, or it can jump from one to three, or it can jump from one to four. It does not have the energy to jump from, automatically jump from two to three. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Therefore, the number of spectral lines in this case will be n into n minus 1 by 2, whereas the number of spectral line in this case will be only equal to n minus 1. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Everyone understands this? Yes. Sir. I'll give you two minutes to note this now. Now you can solve this question. This question now looks a straightforward one, so I'll give you a minute to give me the answer. The absorption spectrum between two energy levels, the number of spectral lines, what is the emission spectrum between these two lines? And the answer is, Do I have an answer, my dear friends? Six, sir. The answer is six. This is exactly the same question that I asked you. Yes or no? The same example that I give you. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. The next heading that we are going to write is the hydrogen spectrum. is the hydrogen spectrum. Any idea what do you mean by this uh, hydrogen spectrum?
any idea now if there is an hydrogen atom you excite it and you raise this hydrogen atom to higher levels it will not remain there right it will try to come back to its uh, ground energy level yes or no yes sir. now when it tries to come back to its uh, ground level what will happen is it will make a transition from higher level to lower level yes or no yes sir. whenever it makes a transition from one level one energy state to other energy state it will emit a radiation yes or no yes sir. the radiation would be of different wavelengths so you will get a spectrum of different wavelengths and that spectrum if it is a hydrogen atom will be known as a hydrogen atom hydrogen spectrum if it is some other hydrogen like atom it will be known as the spectrum of that atom it is any atom in particular it will be known in the spectrum of that uh, atom do we understand this yes sir so depending on from where to where the transition has been made you will be having different wavelengths and therefore you have a series do we understand this yes you don't have to write this down this is just for you to understand we get this yes sir then because of this uh, spectral lines you will have a uh, different different series and i hope you know the name of this series what are the name of this series lyman balmer pastern uh, fund and bracket bracket and fund these are the five uh, series and these are their names and you obviously know which series is which yes or no no yes yes which series is which which oh, series is yeah. which ha huh? like for lyman n is 1 for lyman n is 1 and n2 can be any number higher than 1 do we understand this or this is going above right saying bye 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 no sir pakka na sir yes sir okay so now we can note uh, these things down according to both theory the wavelength or radiation emitted from this hydrogen atom will be given by 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square into r where i n2 is the outer orbit and n1 is the inner orbit do we understand this yes so no no yes yes sir i'll give you two minutes to note this down fatafat note it down now these are the series drawn in one diagram you don't have to draw it you just have to understand this as you can see in the pink one lyman series all the transition are made to n is equal to 1 do we see this yes for balmer series all the transition are made to n is equal to 2 for pastern series all the transition are made to n is equal to 3 for bracket series all the transition are made to 4 for the fun series all the transitions are made to 5 do we understand this yes sir the first member the first line is from the higher next higher to the lowest do we understand this yes. so for the lyman series the first line will be 2 to 1 for bracket uh, for passion uh, for balmer series the first line will be 3 to 2 do we understand this yes sir here remember this very important point wavelength is maximum that means frequency is minimum the last line the last line is from infinity for the last line the wavelength is minimum and frequency or energy is maximum do not forget this do we understand this yes i'll give you 2 minutes to note this down and we come to series by series lyman series 
transition is made from higher orbit to n is equal to 1. The first member will be from 2 to 1. The value of 1 by lambda, as you can see in this case, will come as 3 r by 4. So the value of lambda will be 4 r by 3, which is the maximum in this series. Do you understand this? Yes. The limiting member will come when uh, it makes a transition from infinity and the wavelength of that limiting member is going to be r. Uh, the uh, wavelength of this uh, limiting member will be equal to 1 by r and that is going to be the minimum. But energy in this case is going to be maximum. The frequency will be going to be maximum. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Note it down first. You don't have to note the second member. It is just to make you understand that this is how Lyman series is all about. The next series is the Balmer series. The first member of this series is when transition is made from 3 to 1, third orbit to the second orbit. The value of 1 by lambda will be coming as 4 r by 3, uh, 5 r by 3 uh, by 36. So lambda becomes maximum 36 by 5 r. It comes to like this. You don't have to remember this. You just have to remember that the first member is from 3 to 1, the limiting member will have a wavelength lambda by uh, 4 by r, which you see is the minimum wavelength of this series. Maximum wavelength, minimum wavelength, maximum frequency, minimum frequency. This is what you need to remember because there can be a question, similar question, same question can come in your exam anytime. I'll give you two minutes to note down this. That takes us to the next two series, passion series, where the lower orbit is n is equal to 3. The bracket series where the lower order is 4. Remember the first member of the series for passion will be from 4 to 3. For bracket it will be from 5 to 4. The limiting member is from infinity to 4 and infinity to 5. I hope you understand this. Note it down first. Then comes the life series that is the fun series. In the fun series you have the lower orbit as uh, n is equal to 5. The first member will be transitioned from 6 to 5, which I will have the maximum wavelength, but the minimum uh, frequency. Where are all these lines lies? Uh, remember, they are asking questions these days, which is based on your knowledge. The Lyman series lies in the ultraviolet. The Balmer series lies in the visible. You can see the wavelength uh, is increasing. All uh, the rest are lying in the infrared region. Note it down. This is just for your general information. There could be a question that comes. That takes us to the next table. This next table is showing you the different uh, energy levels of hydrogen atom. The first energy level is minus 13.6. Then you have minus 3.4. That is this divided by 4. Then you have this divided by 9, 16, and so on. And you have the various energy levels. And then the transition is made. You can find out the difference in energy levels from this table. Do we understand this? Yes. Sir. Same thing. Just given in the form of energy levels. I'll give you a minute if you want to note it down. Then this is a table in which all this information is given in um, one thing. We have the maximum wavelength we have the minimum wavelength we have the ratio of maximum and minimum and we have the region in which uh, these lines lie the first one lies in the ultraviolet the second one lies in the visible range and the rest of them they come in the infrared range do we understand this yes do you wish to note it down no sir as your wish, then comes the next uh, point, and it's a very important point. Again, it's nothing new, but uh, just note it down. If you have transition from different, different energy levels to different, different energy levels, here you can see a transition and happening from a transition happening from n is equal to 4 to n is equal to 3 or n is equal to 2 or n is equal to 1. You have three different energies. Sorry. You have four different energies and four different wavelengths. Do we understand this? Yes. Now you can see that this, uh, that this what? E dash will be more than E double dash, will be more than E triple dash. Yes or no? 
yes lambda dash will be less than lambda double dash because it is in the inverse ratio yes or no yes e will be equal to e dash plus e double dash plus e triple dash yes or no and yes. therefore 1 by lambda will be equal to 1 by lambda dash plus 1 by lambda 2 dash plus 1 by lambda 3 dash so if someone gives you the value of lambda for these three energy levels you can add them this is a simple question i mean if it comes in the examination hall you may not be able to comprehend if you just remember this you will be able to solve this question just don't write it. I'll give you two more points and then you can uh, note down all these points together. Now, remember. This lit box constant and this lit box constant is a constant, but only when this uh, electron is the mass of the nucleus is very large compared to the mass of the electron when the nucleus is considered to be massive. Otherwise, this Lidberg constant is different for different elements. And I always tell this thing at the last, the value of Lidberg constant for any element will be given by this formula. R dash is R upon 1 plus M by M, where M is the mass of the electron and capital M is the mass of the nucleus. And this capital R is the value of R, which is 1.09 into 10 raised to the power 7. Do we understand this? Remember, this is a very important consideration that Lidbus constant is actually not a constant. We get this? Yes. Last but not the least, uh, we call some spectrums as uh, line spectrums. We call some spectrum as continuous spectrum and we will be doing this continuous spectrum and line spectrum. What do you mean by line spectrum? Lines are discrete. When we have this hydrogen spectrum or spectrum emitted by when an electron is jumping from higher level to lower level, it can only emit. The, the difference in energy levels is constant, so it can only emit one wavelength, yes or no? And therefore, if you look at this spectrum, the spectrum will be in the form of line and it will not be continuous. Do we understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Do we understand uh, what I'm saying? The spectrum of any atom, if you see, and we have seen it here in the energy level diagrams here, you can see in this Lyman series, you will only have five, five wavelengths, one, two, three, four, five, only five wavelengths you will get, yes or no? If it is making jump, jump from six to one, five to one, four to one, three to one. So the wavelength would be in the form, the spectrum would be in the form of lines. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. If it is a continuous emission, you will have continuous spectrum. We will see when do we have continuous spectrum and when do we have line spectrum. But right now, what you have to understand is atomic spectrum, atomic spectrum is a line spectrum. Do we understand this? Yes. Sir. Atomic spectrum is a line spectrum. We have different, different distinct wavelengths coming. Therefore, we have line spectrum. I'll give you two minutes to note this down. Then this is the first question that we are going to attempt. And this is a question from, I think, 29 January, fifth shift one. The ratio of maximum wavelength of Lyman series of hydrogen atom to minimum wavelength of Balmer series of helium atom. Option A is the correct option. Everyone got this? Yes. Sir. 1 by lambda is equal to R Lidberg constant into Z square 1 by N1 square minus 1 by N2 square. 
Now remember, they are talking about the maximum wavelength of Lyman series. Maximum wavelength of Lyman series occurs when? And remember, maximum wavelength of Lyman series for hydrogen atom. When will it occur? One to two. One by lambda max. Maximum wavelength occurs when the transition is made from two to one. Yes or no? Yes. So this will be equal to R into one by one minus one by four into the atomic number one square. Do we understand this? Yes. Now if we talk about the minimum wavelength of Balmer series for helium. Helium, 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 helium. So when will it occur? When a transition is oops. So when will this minimum wavelength occur? Mm. When the transition is made from infinity to two. Infinity to two, but again, remember this is uh, this is our uh, dear friend, uh, dear friend where, dear friend uh, helium. Yes or no? Yes. So for our dear friend helium, for our dear friend helium, the atomic number will be two. You just put the value of Z as two. And you find the ratio. So here we come back. This will be equal to R into 1 by 4 minus 1 by infinity into 2 square is 4. You take the ratio and I think you end up with the answer 4 by 3. Yes or no? No or yes? Yes. Congratulations, my dear friends. That is the correct uh, answer. Everyone got this? Yes or no? No, yes. Yes. This is the next one. The reason why this question is given is there is a term here that normally comes the short wavelength. When, when anyone talks about the short wavelength limit, which wavelength he is talking about? Minimum wavelength. You have two minutes to give me the answer. Don't have so much time for you to get the maximum lambda for passion series is how much? I think it is 144 by 7R. Yes or no? Yes. The minimum is how much? 9 by R. Lambda min by lambda max will be coming as 16 by 7. So you have to multiply 16 by 7. Sorry, lambda uh, min by max. Uh, uh, again, I did, did the reverse. Lambda min by lambda max will be 7 by 16. You have to multiply 18,800 by 7 by 16 and the only answer by approximation and you are still not using it that you will get will be 8,225 uh, my dear friends. So that is the answer. I can't tell you how you got it. Moving on to the next question and this is the one. The ratio of wavelength for the first line of the, 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 the Balmer series and the first line eh? of the Lyman and the Balmer. The first, the first line of a lambda series, eh? Lyman series will be R into 1 by 1 minus 1 by 4. The first line of the, 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 the Balmer series is 1 by 4 minus 1 by 9. You have to find the ratio of wavelengths of Lyman to, 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 to Balmer. And the answer I think that you're going to get is as simple as 5 by 27. Yes or no? No, yes. Yes. This is a question from your this year paper. And I hope you can make a good attempt at this one. 
This is, I think, from J E E Main, thirty first January, shift one, shift one, shift one, and shift one. And the answer is twenty seven, my dear friends. Well done. So as you can see, one by lambda hydrogen atom R into one by n one square minus n two square. For one by lambda one, the transition is made from uh, one by one minus one by uh, nine. And for one by lambda two, it is R into one by one minus one by four. I think from here, you should be able to calculate the ratio. And I think the ratio that you are going to get is 27 by 32. Yes or no? No or yes? Yes. Congratulations, a celebration. We are not going to celebrate. We are going to move and see this question. This is from JEE -E Main 2023, 30th January, shift one. And what is the answer for this one? The speed is directly proportional to Z by N. Yes or no? No, yes. Yes or no? No, yes. Yes. Sir. So V3 by V7 will be N7 by N3. And you end up with the answer. Your calculations still have not improved. What is the answer for this one? Option one, sir. Hang on. God exists. Option one exists. That takes us to the last question for this particular topic. And the last question for this particular topic again comes from one of the attempts. I hope from one of your attempts that you have attempted. I don't remember when were your exams. This is 25 Jan 2023, chapter 2. The diagram shows different transition of electron A, B, C, D between the energy level with energy mentioned in the figure. Among the shown transition, which transition will uh, generate the, 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 the photon of 124.1 nanometers? And my dear friends, option D is the correct option. To have to find out the energy of uh, the electron, which has a wavelength of 124.1 nanometer, we'll start tomorrow's class from this particular thing only. So the energy of this photon will be HSC by lambda. And I told you HSC is 120. 4.2, sometimes 1, sometimes 0, divided by 124.1. So, uh, what I'm doing, it's not 124.1. It is 1241 divided by 12, one, uh, 124.1. So, the energy comes as 10 electron volts. Yes or no? Yes. The only photon, the only electron that can have this much of energy is this one. Yes or no? Yes. That is the answer, my dear friends. We'll start tomorrow's class from this particular thing. We will be going into something known as photoelectric effect. That would be the next class. Take care. God bless all of you. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir.